Hey, we are back in the Tremor, going on another trip. Um, it's been a few weeks since I've done a video on anything. Uh, just been kind of busy with a bunch of other projects. But uh, we are headed to the Pryor Mountains to uh, drive up to the big ice cave up there. That's what it's called. Uh, might do some lunch while we're there. Um, it's just me this time by myself. But uh, yeah, uh, we've done some modifications to the pickup since the last video. We're still just on the highway headed that way. We gotta stop and get fuel and uh, yeah, kind of get headed off this uh, highway to another. So yeah. We're currently on uh, a road that passes through the Crow Indian Reservation, uh, partially. It comes and goes through it. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with this area, there's a ton of culture and history of many Indian tribes, um, kind of from back in the 1800s when Lewis and Clark passed through here. But a lot of people have opinions about different tribes. And, um, but as time goes on, it's kind of interesting to learn about their history and their kind of their reach where they were um, you know, what brought them here, like in this whole area, I guess, a lot of these, um, like the Crow tribe, they were more east towards South Dakota, and as the, uh, the white man moved west, a lot of them kept moving west as well to get away from them, and so, um, the, the Crow actually settled out here around the Pryor Mountains, because that's, I guess, just where they ended up. And there's a ton of myths and ancient legends. Um, there's one in particular that I learned about probably about a decade ago. Uh, me and some buddies back when we were all commuting to the oil field in North Dakota, we'd come home on our days off and find ways to get in trouble, um, usually driving out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night, getting stuck for nine to 10 hours, which, you know, was probably, you know, now it's really dangerous, but, um, but no, they, uh, we talked about the Pryor Mountain Pygmies, which I guess is a legend of this area, primarily in the mountains over there, which is where we're, we're heading relative. Um, but they, uh, they're a supposedly miniature or dwarf type people with really big heads and no neck. And people say they see them, people say they're still around. Um, there's stories of mummified uh, like corpses found that people mistake for mummified babies, but it's actually uh, people, like full-grown adults, just dwarves. And uh, most of the legends kind of talk about them as being devils, evil and stuff. Like they are fierce, they don't like to be found, they don't like to be messed with. Um, so a lot of people fear them. Um, a lot of people come up here and bring them gifts or offerings or whatever to, I guess, maybe leave them alone. Um, we tried to find them that one time in this area. We never found anything, but um, again, we were younger and kind of stupid. But uh, so, yeah, there's uh, plenty of legends about them. The, the craziest part about it and a lot of this, I mean, you could fact check. There's plenty of stories about it. There's YouTube channels and and uh, other people that kind of go deeper into this stuff as being like horror stories and whatnot. But there's uh, the, the crazy thing in my mind, there's stories of legends like this spanning hundreds of years across multiple states back into like New Mexico. Um, there's a cow on the road, um, but like New Mexico, Arizona, Wyoming, anywhere where there's ancient history of many Indian tribes have very similar stories to this. And what's crazy is back then there's no, there was no phones or, you know, communication with each other. They didn't more for the most part, didn't even know each other were there. Maybe just from ancestral stories and stuff of meeting along the way, but they have these stories that seem to kind of sync up and they're just so far out there that it's hard to think that back then they were kind of all getting together and, Hey guys, we should spread rumors that there's little people in the mountains that'll kill you. You know, I, I highly doubt that that was the case. I mean, 
myths and legends are going to kind of spread and you know the tales of it are going to grow and change and make it more seem un unreal but it's just insane that that something like that could have happened so long ago and now these stories are still conveyed today and makes you wonder here's kind of what i'm talking about as far as the uh, reservation goes the sign says no trespassing restricted area crow tribal members only violators will be prosecuted um bia usually enforces this stuff but i just thought it's pretty cool to see a sign kind of sucks because that back there looks pretty cool but we'll just keep on on the national forest side of things looks like we got some company on this road anyways well ironically i ran into one of my buddies on the trail him and his family were out razor riding and uh he told me that pretty much we're not, we're not gonna make it to our destination because the snow is still pretty deep up a ways. But I'm still kind of continuing on to see how far I can go. Um, just to see what it looks like. But yeah, it was kind of funny. Just ripped by on a four-seater razor. I'm like, hey, I know that guy. So he backed up and we talked for a minute. And he just kind of told me to be on the lookout for a few more riders and there's a bunch of snow that they couldn't make it through. They almost made it to the, the ice cave, but uh, probably a little too early in the year still to get all the way there. So Yeah, we turned around it was getting pretty like this but worse and uh, there's still some tracks and Dry ground you can get on I'm in I'm just in full drive and got it in deep Deep snow and mud or sand mode or whatever the hell they call it um, That's I noticed like a few weeks back when I was driving around in the mud that one you could feel the limited slip doing a little bit more work um i try i put it in the the rock crawl mode but it like wouldn't shift out a second so um but yeah as you can see it's pretty wet still a lot of snow um we're kind of getting in the shaded areas and uh it's just really really soupy and bouncy but uh yeah I turn around and there's some four wheelers behind me and I talked to him and they weren't sure if they were going to keep going or not, but yeah, so that's where we're kind of ending the big ice cave adventure right now. We're going to hit up a couple other trails on our way home and uh, probably stop and cook lunch or something on the other one, but yeah. Now we're on the other side of the highway. Priors are actually back that way a lot, but we are on just a little two track road, kind of cuts across some mountains and valleys and stuff. And figured it, I've never been on it. It'd be a nice little drive home. I'm probably gonna stop here in a minute, cook some lunch, even though it's 2.30. Just haven't really found a good stopping point yet. But yeah, I mean, the landscape back here is pretty unique. Um, you can kind of see like the depth of the, you know, the rock. Probably, all this, I believe, used to be underwater, you know, hundreds of millions of years ago. So it's pretty cool to see like what the rock looks like from erosion and everything like that. This thing is filthy. It doesn't look terrible, but it was pretty clean this morning and there's mud pretty much everywhere. Yeah. We found a pretty cool spot back here. I think it's called Bobcat Pass or Bobcat Trail or something. Figured it'd be a good place to set up and make lunch, making a, basically like a ham and cheese melt. Um, <clears throat> see how it turns out, but yeah, um, I kind of took a sweet little bypass. There's a, like a dirt bike trail, a bunch of people went by on dirt bikes. But there's a little like rock crawl deal over there that I figured I'd take. And it's a little two track right here, but didn't want to go too far. I'm not real sure if this is part of, it's all BLM, but I'm not sure if it's part of access or not. So I figured it'd be a good little overlook to stop and make lunch. Just wanted to do an update of where I'm at now. Um, I'm on this 
pass or trail, I guess, called Hatcher Pass. Um, kind of spur of the moment, saw it pop up. That wasn't on the uh, Onyx off-road app. Um, it is BLM, so you can drive through it. I've had to move a bunch of cows. There's been a ton of cows on this trail. Cow poop everywhere. I even had to stop at one point and uh, use the old machete to clear a little bit of a brush path just so I didn't scratch the shit up out of the cab of my truck. But I've just been cruising along in full wheel drive, just switched it down to four low. And I mean, there's been a few obstacles that I kind of didn't really pay attention to It came up on and this thing just kind of trapes right over top of them. It's pretty cool. There's like tight gaps like right now where there's trees and sagebrush and mainly just doing my best to keep from scratching everything up. Um, folding the mirrors in right now just to get around this obstacle. Um, but yeah. We're supposed to be coming out. That one might have kissed me a little bit. We're supposed to be coming out another highway that'll take us back through uh, Belfry. And I don't know, we'll see where we end up from there. I didn't think I'd find something like this that would take me completely around the mountain, basically. So it's pretty cool. Um, I have service, which is weird. So I've been a little bit more confident, really, just because. If I get stuck or break something or die, at least someone will find me or I can call them. I'm my last breath, I guess. Um, kind of morbid, but I got that kind of sense of humor. This will be a uh, pretty interesting right here. I guess I'll leave the camera on. I didn't realize we'd come up to something like this, but I'm in four low, deep rock and snow, and we're gonna climb up this grade like it's nothing. Or not deep rock and s snow, deep sand and snow, I guess. Tight turn. Kind of hear the tires rub hair. And yeah, haven't found anything I can't handle yet. So coming out of the uh, trail over there, um, I noticed when we got onto the highway, or I guess the, the main road, I should say, I wasn't on the highway, I'm on the highway now. But when we got onto the main road, I saw signs on the cattle guard saying no trespassing which I could understand that although the map shows a trail through there there's just a section that's uh, normally if I would have known that was the case I wouldn't have gone through it but um, there was some gates and some cows on the normal trail that shows it on the actual map as you know BLM and so I just kind of was polite and I guess it's kind of strange how that lays out. Now we're headed back to, well, home. We're on the highway now. Um, and yeah, it was kind of a fun little adventure driving around and seeing all the uh, the things I saw, even though we didn't make it to the big ice cave, but I found some, some roads and some trails that ultimately I didn't know were there, or at least I didn't know they were open for this kind of stuff. Really got to try the tremor out, how I wanted to for a long time and it did great um, yeah um, also I'm gonna try to edit the uh, not really edit but I'll still edit but I'm gonna try to change the way I do my video layout I was trying to follow just like a generic like intro card you know exposition and story and then outro but the editing stuff that I use is kind of shitty the uh, the way you set the I guess the way you chop it and clip it and lay it out and then when you put music in there it kind of makes the music volume different and changes if it's in the forefront or in the background um, I uh, I wasn't sure exactly how to do that do it the right way but I tried it some people had some issues with it said it was too loud I understand there's no really no way for me to mix it right so I think I might just get rid of it altogether and then just kind of have a video full of trucks and me and other things. But uh, yeah, I just don't really, I don't know what to do with this stuff. Um, the negative feedback I've got has been the only constructive criticism that I've had. So uh, I guess keep telling me how I'm doing everything wrong and I'll try to make it better. 